Hallelujah, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We do not take it for granted that you are on our side, that you for, you are for us. Blessed be your name, Jesus. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your abundant mercies. Thank you for your compassion. We thank for protection. Thank for preservation. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for increase. Thank you for promotion. Thank you for enlargement. Thank you for fruitfulness. Thank you for the covenant that we share with you. Thank you for your covenant commitment to us. Thank you for the gift of family. We give you praise. Thank you for the gift of fellowship with your spirit and with your person. Thank you for the gift of your word. We worship you. Thank you for a brand new week. Thank you because this week is already settled as it is according to your plan. We we'll give you praise, Jesus. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. We are grateful. We do not take it for granted the things you are doing for us. Thank you, Father. And the people of Jesus said, Amen. Praise God. Good morning. You are welcome to today's edition of Conform. Conform is our online daily devotional in which we sit at the feet of Jesus so he will breathe on us so that we can become more and more like him with each person day. We are going to read the Bible today as usual. and We are reading from the book of John chapter 11. The book of John chapter 11. Chapter 11 Now, a man named Lazarus was sick, 
He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. When he heard this, Jesus said, This sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory, so that God's Son may be glorified through it. Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Yet when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. Then he said to his disciples, Let us go back to Judea. But Rabbi, they said, A short while ago the Jews tried to stone you, and yet you are going back there? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? A man who walks by day will not stumble, for he sees by this world's light. It is when he walks by night that he stumbles, for he has no light. After he had said this, he went on to tell them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake him up. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and for your sake I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Then Thomas, called Didymus, said to the rest of the disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, If you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she told him. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who was to come into the world. And after she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. The teacher is here, she said, and is asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now, Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews, who had been with Mary in the house, comforting her, noticed how quickly she got up and went out, they followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? He asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odor, for he has been there four days. Then Jesus said, Did I not tell you that if you believed you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, Take off the grave clothes and let him go. Therefore, many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what Jesus did, put their faith in him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. Then the chief priests and the Pharisees called a meeting of the Sanhedrin. What are we accomplishing? They asked. Here is this man performing many miraculous signs. If we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him. 
And then the Romans will come and take away both our place and our nation. Then one of them, named Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year, spoke up. You know nothing at all. You do not realize that it is better for you that one man die for the people than that the whole nation perish. He did not say this on his own, but as high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus would die for the Jewish nation. And not only for that nation, but also for the scattered children of God, to bring them together and make them one. So from that day on, they plotted to take his life. Therefore, Jesus no longer moved about publicly among the Jews. Instead, he withdrew to a region near the desert, to a village called Ephraim, where he stayed with his disciples. When it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, many went up from the country to Jerusalem for their ceremonial cleansing before the Passover. They kept looking for Jesus, and as they stood in the temple area, they asked one another, What do you think? Isn't he coming to the feast at all? But the chief priests and Pharisees had given orders that if anyone found out where Jesus was, he should report it so that they might arrest him. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. The reading of the word of God is blessed. Okay, we are beginning to round off our talk on taking the gates. And um, today we just want to uh, talk a bit more about the taking the gates of governance. On Friday, we encouraged ourselves that we need to get involved with governance. Now, don't forget there are three tiers of government governance. That is the executive, the uh, parliamentary, that is the people who make the laws. The people, uh, the parliamentary level makes the law. The executive implements the law, and then the 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 justice system um, they execute they 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 enforce the law. The parliamentary makes the law, the executive executes or implements the law, and then the justice system enforces the law in case somebody uh, decides to break the law. Okay. If we must be relevant, very relevant at the gate, we must be well represented at these three tiers of government or these three levels of government. It's so very important. It's so very, very important. Now, um, um, let's see it from the Word of God, these three tiers of government. Let's see... Um, let's see... Um, uh, Second Samuel, chapter a nineteen. Second Samuel, chapter nineteen. Or maybe we should see Deuteronomy chapter sixteen, verse eighteen first. Deuteronomy chapter sixteen, verse eighteen. Bible says, "You shall appoint judges and officers in all your gates, which the Lord your God gives you. You shall appoint judges and officers." In all your gate, which the Lord your God gives you, according to the tribes, and they shall judge the people with just judgment. They shall just judge the people with just judgment. You see, this is one of the reasons why we have to take over at the gates. Because the justice system is there to judge with just judgment. But alas, when people don't know God, when they are not children of God, when, not, when they are not children of light, they will use the justice system to, to, to oppress rather than, rather than govern. You remember Romans chapter 13 verse 3 uh, that we read. He said, rulers are there not for, to terrorize the people, but as a terror to the evil. Not to terrorize the good, but as a terror to the evil. Judges are there to terrorize the evil, not the good. But what we are having in our nation and in several nations today is governments that are there to oppress the people one way or the other. That's why we need to take over. That we would know what it should be. We, we would know what is up. We, that's why we, it's important that we take over. That's why it's so very important that we take over. Praise the Lord. Now, look at um, um, 2 Samuel, 
Second Samuel, the book of Second Samuel. Glory to Jesus. Second uh, Samuel, chapter nineteen, verse eight. Second Samuel, chapter nineteen, verse eight. Um, verse verse eight. Yes. Then the king arose. Who is the king? The head of the executive, the head of state, the, the, the paramount ruler thereabout. Then the king arose and sat in the gates. The king arose and sat in the gate and they told all the people saying there is the king. There is the king sitting at the gate. So, so while the, the last uh, verse that we read from Deuteronomy is talking about the justice uh, tier of government, this one is talking about the executive tier of government. It's talking about the executive tier of government. And then if we read Zechariah chapter 8, verse uh, 16, Zechariah chapter 8 and verse 16, glory to Jesus. Uh, thank you, Lord. These are the things you shall do. Speak each man the truth to his neighbor. Give judgment in your gates for truth, for justice, and peace. Let not of you think evil in your heart against your neighbor. Give judgment in your gates for truth, for justice, and for peace. So that also is a pointer to the justice tier of government uh, and then of course we remember proverbs 31 verse uh, 23 bible says that the husband of the of the virtuous woman is known at the gates where he sits with the elders okay where he sits with the elder what do they do at the at the at the gates there there they make laws there they execute laws and there they give judgment when necessary Glory to Jesus. Lot also sat at the gate. Genesis chapter 19 verse 1. But this is what we are saying. Lot was a, a righteous person. He sat at the gate. It, there was a lot of cheating and all kinds of things going on at the gates. A lot of oppression of the people at the gate. A lot of unrighteous uh, decisions and things being carried out in that city. But he was a he was a righteous who refused. He practiced righteousness, but he refused to speak out against injustice and against uh, and against sin and against crime. And when Sodom and Gomorrah went down, he went down with them one one way or the other. His wife became a salt, and he his two children raped him. And of course, they they gave back to cost nations. They gave back to cost nations. Okay, uh, th this is so very important. You and I have to, we have to get into the mode of speaking up. We cannot continue to be quiet. Uh, if somebody, if there's anybody that has a calling into politics, he should go inside this. If anybody has a calling in, in, into in, in justice system, he should enter inside it. If anybody has a calling into uh, whatever it is, uh, by going into politics, you'll be able to, 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 to enter into the parliamentary system. You'll be able to find your way into the executive system one way or the other. We should go inside it. It is our calling. If we must get the pursuit of the Great Commission right, these are the things we must do. These are the things we must do. We must take over the Etite nation or the mountain of the Etite. Etites. Etites. Etites is from the word et, and et means terror, and we have, we have connected it. The rulers are given not uh, as a terror to the good, but as a terror to the evil. Praise God. I see God helping us. So. I see God helping us. All the manners of, of abysmal waste and, and terrible oppression going on in our country is because we do not have people who understand the Great Commission. Well, I didn't say we didn't have Christians, so I said we didn't have people who understand the Great Commission and are committed to the pursuit of the Great Commission in all those places. That's why some people could sit down and, and do a, a bill, pass the Kama bill, and then there, there are Christians there. There are Christians in those houses. 
but they refuse to speak is because their pastors have not taught them. They do not know about the essentiality of relevance at the gate. You and I know it, and God will sponsor us one way or the other. People like us who know it, God will sponsor us to those places. In the name of Jesus, as you go, listen, we cannot achieve this without empowerment. My God will empower you. In the name of Jesus, as you go this week, your empowerment goes to another level altogether. Financial empowerment, political empowerment, governmental empowerment, spiritual empowerment, mental empowerment goes to another level altogether. In the name of Jesus, the angels that empower people's mind, that empower their hands and empower their feet, that empower their destinies go to work, they go to to overwork on your on your behalf this week to increase multiply and skyrocket your empowerment in the name of jesus it is well with you failure is far from you calamity is far from you oppression is far from you depression is far from you you will not fail you will not fall you will not falter your family will not scatter in the name of the lord jesus thank you father your health will not dwindle in the name of jesus the gates of this city open to you of their own accord today and this week in the name of jesus it is the best one you have ever lived it's a day of science it's a week of wonders it's a week of miracles it's a week of promotion it's a week of increase in the name of jesus calamity and pestilence are far from you plagues is far from you covid can never find you neither can it find your loved ones in the name of jesus you cannot be kidnapped violence is far from you no devil who is who is perpetuating violence will be able to find you neither any members of your family whether at home in the village or abroad i prophesy safety and protection and preservation all the way in jesus name amen please do have a splendid day god bless you and a wonderful week